Hi, uh, welcome back to part two. Um, I think where I left off was regarding that uh, uh, two small earthquakes had uh, happened on uh, the 13th and the 14th of, of this month of January uh, 2012. Uh, the magnitude of the Friday quake was a 1.2. That was kind of a small earthquake. And it was uh, occurred at 6.45 a.m. in was located five miles south and southeast of Ridgely, uh, Tennessee, which is right on the fault line, the New Madrid fault line. And it was two miles uh, south and southwest of uh, Tiptonville. Uh, Tiptonville, I believe it was, uh, oh, well, I think that was in Tennessee also, because I was thinking it was near Missouri. It was, it was, it's real close to Missouri. Uh, okay, it's uh, six uh, miles north of Rid uh, Ridgely and eight miles west, southwest of uh, Sandburg. Okay, uh, Lake County is part of the new Madras uh, seismic zone, which includes uh, portions of five states and the most active seismic zone in North America east of the Rocky Mountains, uh, according to the United States Geological Survey. And uh, the areas in the zones are West Tennessee, uh, Western Kentucky, Southeast Missouri, and extreme south of Illinois and Northeast uh, Arkansas. 200 years ago, it was in the um, 1811 to 1812, and during that winter, the region was rocked by three devastating earthquakes uh, with a magnitude of 7.0 and larger. The quakes occurred on December the 16th, 1811, January the 23rd, 1812, and February the 7th, 1812. So remember those dates. Okay, so this is about this, this same time. And they were uh, among the largest to strike in North America since uh, the European settlement that was felt throughout most of the nation, uh, according to what the uh, the geological survey said, the uh, website shows that hundreds of aftershocks, some of which that caused severe damage, followed the massive 1811 to 12 earthquake for years. Okay, and then since the 1900, uh, moderately damaging earthquakes have struck the seismic zone every few decades according to the geological survey. On February 7th, the anniversary of the third major quake in 1811 to, uh, to 1812, more than one million people across the nine states were, uh, will participate in the great central U.S. shakeout scheduled for 10.15 a.m. Central Time. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. Okay, during the event, uh, people in school and in other groups will uh, practice the quake safety um, technique for drop, cover, and hold on. Okay, and the local uh, participants in the shakeout include uh, weekly and uh, Obion County school systems and the Dyerberg school system and the Bradford Special School District. Three days later, on February the 10th of the weekly county, Emergency Management Agency is staging one of the biggest disaster drills to be held in Tennessee. Much of the drill will occur in Morton, and uh, keeping with the quake anniversary, the drill is scheduled, is centered on the earthquake disaster. And uh, says for more information on these quakes, please visit the Geological Survey at uh, usgs.gov. And the uh, site also includes tips for earthquake preparedness and so on. Okay. So it says that uh, the Midwest is to be uh, expecting the big one, as they say. Now this article was dated November the 10th of 2011, so that was about, I would say, almost three months ago, I'd say, to, yeah, to the date.
Um, and so it just tells about, it has questions here about can a mag mega thrust quake destroy most of the Midwest United States, killing millions or more people and causing up to trillions of dollars damage. Damages now. Some of the experts say yes, but they warn that uh, unimaginable ca catastrophes may be closer than anyone that wants to believe that. Uh, okay, and then they discuss a little bit about the new matter at fault. And basically, you know, I'm going to leave the link to this, and you guys can can read the rest of this if you like. Um, it just tells basically about, um, well, um, I had an earlier video about uh, the, uh, the, about the Mississippi River that ran uh, backwards and the shockwaves destroyed the whole towns and many hundreds of miles apart. This was from the uh, 1811 earthquake, which had happened. So yes, the Mississippi River did run backwards. Uh, okay, this uh, tells about the infrastructures of the, of the middle United States that it would disrupt transportation in that in that region and it would threaten the internet and energy supplies. It will disrupt food distribution networks and destroy major cities. Catastrophic Chicago. Okay, two natural events can take down the city of Chicago, a massive shock wave caused by a great quake or a gigantic great lake sesh. Okay, it's a sesh is a standing wave in an enclosed or partially enclosed body of water. Uh, seshes or seshes related phenomena have been observed on lakes, reservoirs, swimming pools, bays, um, harbors, and seas. The key uh, requirement for the formation of a sesh is that the body of water be at least partially bound, allowing the formation of the standing wave. Seshes, seshes can be caused by high winds or earthquakes. And if the no matter erupts like it did 200 years ago, uh, Chicago could be a pile of rubble after the uh, shock waves bring down the skyscrapers and a surging uh, mega sesh uh, swamps the entire city's uh, lakefront. And you see the map right here. Because that would come rolling in right there, right there along the waters, you know. And see, there's one. It's an in inland tidal wave. Sesh is threatened ships in um, coastal areas. I guess you would call them like mini tsunamis. <laughs> They're just, just huge waves. Yeah, I'll, d I'll just leave the rest for you to, to look over, examine, and read. Because there's uh, uh, pictures here. Um, I can see that maybe. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot to to look over here and see the devastation. It's look it looks pretty sad. Oh, we never know what we're gonna face. You know, in in these days and times, you never know. I uh, know in my first video I kind of touched on this briefly. Uh, but, uh, going over it, plus I had found some other in PDFs, some files and PDFs. I'm, I'm going to discuss a little earlier in regards to this um, because there's a lot for more information that goes with this. And uh, so there was something else too I wanted to um, uh, touch on, and it's regarding uh, CMEs. Uh, you know, like the coronal mass ejections. Okay, there was one that uh, that occurred uh, on. Um, I want to get the date right. But anyway, this uh, update was. Um, 
Well, I'm not sure. It says that the first signs of it would be on Sunday, uh, January the 22nd, um, with the um, bulk of its disturbance that will occur on Monday, January the 23rd. See that? Look at that blast. Uh, see that blast? That's a pretty big one. Okay, then now that comes to my next article. Okay, about the uh, solar flare. Okay, it says the solar flare that sends particles hurling towards Earth at 630 miles per second. Okay, that's pretty flat, fast and furious. And it will hit our atmosphere on Saturday. And I'm recording this today on Saturday. Okay, and uh, so the flare that was associated with a coronal ma um, mass ejection uh, a burst of solar particles which is now traveling towards the earth at 630 miles per second will hit our atmosphere on Saturday okay I'm sitting here right now recording this so so far nothing no what well, point I'm trying to make here is that we're either going to be hit with by an, the enemy with an EMP or a CME E. It, it all depends really. Um, this information is kind of sketchy from what I'm getting from this website and from what I'm getting from other sources. But since there is, we have enemies within uh, this country here alone that we're not sure w how they're going to take us out. Uh, like I said, it's uh, very likely it could happen around the New Madrid Fault area. And again, it could be in an EMP and, and a very strong CME could take out our electrical grid system. So I just wanted to let you guys know to be prepared if any of this should ever happen. Um, the Earth's direct coronal mass ejection is not predicted to cause damage on earth okay but it might cause magnetic storms so stargazers should watch out for increased northern lights so if you guys like to watch out for the northern lights there you go um, but depending on really how strong that these really are uh, these geomagnetic storms it's possible there are possible and that viewers can be on the lookout for an incre increased uh, northern light activity okay and okay I was trying to get this to work but see there you go here's the here's the CME if it's just a short video uh, but here's here's some more you see them coming out uh, well actually these are back in 2000 so actually these aren't too current uh, actually I was looking for some current ones okay this is a, I think this is a more recent okay it was on the 19th so two days ago so there's your you know, activity there of a, a CME it says it's now at a, a 3.0 level and um, appears to be a fairly large event says a minor R1 level radio blackout resulted. So they all that's pretty strong. Um, okay, sky quakes. I'm really running out of time for this video. I think it's going to run into part three. Um, but anyway, this is going to be a very long subject. Probably be a series. So I'll see you over in part three. Okay, bye-bye.